I guess I'm gonna have to address this one. I think I probably have in some way or another at some point in the history of this channel, but here we go. Would I gamble hair loss for no hair loss? That's the video. The comment received was from Harry Cuball, one of my original subscribers, been with me a long time. Uh, here's what he asked as a follow-up. Quote, would you choose getting all your hair back but becoming ugly? Keeping your present face and your nice beard but losing all your hair? Would you make your own decision alone or would you ask advice from someone else like your wife or a good friend? Okay, I'll answer the last question first. And that would be no. I would not ask someone else. I would make that decision myself. Now let's go ahead and answer those first two questions. First of all, what if I got all my hair back? And, and let's, I'm going to read into this a little bit. By get all my hair back, that means I guess I'm a Norwood one and my hair is completely thick. So when I choose that, and let's also assume that he's meaning that I would keep it the rest of my entire life. So I'd be like Ronald Reagan or Anthony Bourdain or Tony Danza is what he's saying. Would I, if that's what I could receive, would I trade uh, becoming ugly? Which I've said before, I'm an average looking guy. And that's a good thing. I don't want to be known as, a, as an ex explicitly good looking guy because then I've got that much more to lose as I get older. And I feel that if I'm banking on physically just good looks, then I'm, I'm not being forced to compensate in other ways. Like being intelligent, being helpful, being smart, being funny. I think it's important that we're forced to become those things as men. I don't want to rely on good luck. So, so would I go from an average looking guy to ugly? And I, and I guess we could read in between the lines as far as what that means. Does that mean that, you know, I'm somehow physically maimed or just that I would look like an ugly guy? I mean, there are ugly men, uh, I guess that, uh, have good, like, um, this is the worst example, but it's the first one I think of Gilbert Gottfried, right? Um, a couple years back, he was voted the most unsexiest man alive, but look at his hair. <laughs> he's what in his sixties, Norwood one, I think maybe Norwood two. From what I remember, he's, he's always had a full head of hair. So would I become less good look, would I trade looks and become an unlooking, I mean, unlooking, an unattractive looking man, but have my full hair? The answer, here's the answer. No, no, because why? Because my hair doesn't mean that much to me. My hair is not part of my identity. It's like a couple days ago, someone who was probably new to my channel said, Hey, Nick, why don't you just get a hair transplant? And I simply responded, because I don't want one. It's that simple. I don't care about keeping my hair. I really don't. It's not part of my identity. It's that simple. It's that fundamental, which is why when I answered the question on the other video, would I gamble worse hair loss for no hair loss? And I said, of course I wouldn't. I've already won the gamble because I never thought I'd still have this much hair at age 36 and a half. The other question, would I keep my present face and my nice beard? Of course, I don't currently have it in this video, but lose all your hair. So, okay, like, would you choose keeping your present face and your nice beard, but losing all your hair? I kind of feel that that's already what I'm expecting to happen anyway. So I guess the answer to that question, if I'm understanding it correctly, it would be a default yes, because that's my, that's my strategy, that's my plan. My plan is, to lose my hair as it happens naturally and not fight genetics. And I mean, I don't know, as far as the beard goes, that you know how I am. Typically what happens is if half the time you see me, I've got kind of a baby beard going on and the other half, I don't. Um, but ultimately, I think fundamentally, I wanna answer all these questions all at once. My hair does not mean enough to me to really trade anything that I can think of because I don't need hair to be who I am. I really don't. I will, I will evolve from the inside as I evolve on the outside, as I get older. I'm not afraid of the changes that are going to come as I get older. I feel that what control I do have over that is me living the vegan lifestyle and not eating meat and not eating dairy and not eating eggs. I think like even now I read an article, 6% of the population of America is now vegan. That's up from, I think a half a percent or 1% just three years ago, four years ago. This is spiking. There are so many. Now, granted, most vegans are female, about 80%. But still, there's a growing number of vegan men, such as myself, who think, you know what? I accept that I'll go bald. I accept that I will get gray hair. But I don't have to get diabetes. I don't have to get cancer. I can actually have some control over it. Now, I may still get either of those things. 
but I'm dramatically decreasing the chances that I will do that. So it goes back to another one of my fundamental things that I've always said on this channel. Focus on what you can control, not on what you can't. Hair loss, let it happen. I'm not, I'm a balding advocate. And there's, I mean, the real question I guess would be this, is there anything that I'd be willing to trade at all to keep my hair since I don't even care about keeping it to begin with, since I've already accepted that I'm going to lose it. I should probably make my own video about that. So let me just go ahead and stop recording this and pick up there in the next one.